Let's talk about Elevil. It's very important that you understand your antidepressants because you're going to have a lot of patients taking these. So we're talking amitriptyline, trade name Elevil. Why is this given? Well, it's given for depression, anxiety, insomnia, and then we're going to talk about one other use that it can be given for. Okay, before we do that, let's talk about it. its therapeutic class is antidepressant, with its pharmacologic class being a tricyclic antidepressant. Remember, we have a lot of different kinds of antidepressants. We have SSRIs, SNRIs, uh, etc. We also have these tricyclic antidepressants. How does this actually work? What it does is it increases the effect of serotonin and norepinephrine in the CNS. And by doing this, it exhibits anticholinergic effects. So what is an anticholinergic effect? Well, anticholinergics are, are agents that block the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So by doing this, they inhibit the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So when we're thinking fight or flight system, system, we're thinking about the parasympathetic nervous system. And so by inhibiting the parasympathetic nervous system, what we're doing is we're creating these anticholinergic side effects, things like dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, drowsiness, okay? So this Elevil, this amitriptyline, is given as an antidepressant it's a tricyclic antidepressant that's given, and it increases the effect of serotonin and norepinephrine, and it also exhibits these anticholinergic effects. Okay, so because of this, amitriptyline can also be used as an anticholinergic for patients with Parkinson's disease if the patient is also needing a antidepressant. Okay, so it works really well for a patient if they have Parkinson's disease and depression, they can put them on amitriptyline and hopefully this can kind of help for both of those. Okay. But for a patient who doesn't have Parkinson's disease and is taking amitriptyline, you're going to see these anticholinergic side effects. Again, things like dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, drowsiness, sedation, uh, and they can also experience hallucinations, memory impairment, etc. What we need to talk about is one thing that this can lead to is it can lead to this QT prolongation. Okay. So QT prolongation is a concern because what it can do is it can kind of lengthen the action potential in the heart, and that can lead to cardiac arrhythmias. Okay, it can also is also contraindicated in MI, heart failure, and glaucoma. One thing it can do too is it can increase the risk for suicidal ideation. Okay, so we really want to monitor our patients, and and, and this is kind of an unfortunate thing about a lot of these antidepressants is that they can cause this suicidal ideation and things. So we really got to monitor our patient's thoughts, make sure that we are assessing if they're feeling suicidal. A big thing to keep in mind here, and this is the case with, with a lot of these antidepressants, where basically all these antidepressants is you don't want to use within two weeks of an MAOI. Okay. It's going to take about two weeks for the MAOI to get out of the system. And so we don't want to start the patient on amitriptyline if they are taking MAOIs. We want to wait about two weeks before we start them on this after we stop the MAOI. Okay. I want to make sure the patient is taking the medication exactly as instructed that if they're feeling better one day, they don't just skip the med. And if they're feeling sick, they don't take extra. Okay. We'd also want to monitor orthostatic hypotension and we need to teach the patients that it can actually change the color of their urine to a blue or green color, okay? It can lead to photosensitivity, and we, so we'd want to teach our patients to use sunscreen when they go outside. And again, talking about this QT prolongation and everything, this can cause arrhythmias, hypotension, and EKG changes. Okay, so biggest things to keep in mind here. What are our biggest take, takeaways? Amitriptyline is a tricyclic antidepressant that can cause anticholinergic side effects, okay? Things like the dry mouth, the blurred vision, uh, anything that would, would be the case if we're inhibiting the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So other big things, QT prolongation, don't take within two weeks of MAOIs and monitor the patient's uh, thought processes and, and suicidal tendencies, okay? This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by Nursing.com. To get your free copy of the 140 Must Know Meds textbook, head over to Nursing.com slash 140 meds. That's nursing.com slash 140 meds. When you head over there, you get a free copy of this book. All you have to do is pay for shipping. We love you guys. Now go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.